So next up, we have uh, Russell Casanero, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, who okay. is the CEO of uh, Wampay, which is promoting e-commerce for all, and not just any old e-commerce, crypto e-commerce. So merchants and um, en entrepreneurs of all likes, please pay attention. This is one of the most important, I think, aspects of what's going on in our, in our economy. We need merchants. We need suppliers. We need consumers to be working in crypto. Uh, so tell us, Russell, uh, a little bit about yourself and, and what you're doing in this space. Sure. So I, uh, I come from, a, um, from an e-commerce background for the last 22 years from uh, one of the first credit card websites where you could go online and view your, view your, uh, um, your bill and pay for it back in 96 to uh, um, forcherry.com where we allowed people to make donations with credit cards to nonprofits. Before then, it was actually pretty rare. To um, most recently, I was the president of the company that managed all the e-government systems for the state of Hawaii. And there, I, uh, we processed about $2 billion in payments a year. And we burned through all the three biggest banks there because they couldn't handle the volume of transactions we had. And it was extremely frustrating and extremely you know, costly to move around. Then we had credit card merchants that we had to deal with PCI compliance, payment card industry compliance and fraud. And I, I realized that e-commerce was broken. And the real reason it's broken is because people don't have a way or didn't have a way to make a payment that was cash, but electronic. In other words, one, there was no credit required. Even when you, know, when you make a, when you pay your bill, your, uh, when you pay your taxes with an ACH, with an e-check, you think that's cash because it's pulled right out of your bank account, but it's actually credit and the, the banks are on hook for that for 45 days. So they hate it, you know? And, uh, and so, and, and it's, you know, it's got a whole bunch of problems. And so and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is horrible. I want to fix this after I fix e-government. And uh, so a couple of years later, we started working with cannabis businesses in Hawaii that wanted to Dude. <laughs> yeah, that 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 want that needed to you know pay for things like their licensing and applications and stuff and i realized that there was no way for them to pay so that was when i learned about crypto actually it was at uh, south by southwest in 2012 i think 2011 wow. they have one of those here in austin i they do don't they that's, <laughs> that's where i was and uh and, and I was like, oh, my God, this is the way to do it. This solves both problems. And, uh, and, and I, you know, I was like, I'm going to do this regardless, without a doubt. And so in 2014, we ended up in Hawaii being voted the best government website in the United States. And so at that point, I was like, okay, now, I should, now I'm ready to get this thing going. And so in 2017, that was my, when my co-founder, Matt, and I decided to to go all the way in and created Wampay. And uh, what we do is we provide software that allows any business anywhere to accept cryptocurrency payments um, and Bitcoin right now, whether they have a bank or not. And uh, the key to this is doing it in a non-custodial way. So I think a lot of companies and, and not to, I wouldn't disparage, you know, BitPay at all. I think that they're, it's great what they're doing. But BitPay wants to be the next, you know, WorldPay or VeriSign or PayPal, but of the crypto world. And what we believe is that crypto eliminates the need for PayPal and VeriSign and WorldPay because they can, uh, because you don't need that, that infrastructure that they have. They don't have. There's no Visa network. There's no encrypted transport that has to go through. There's no passing of credit card information from one vendor to the next that can only get stolen. Um, it's a much more secure, safe, simple, fast way to do transactions. And it's what we've been looking for. And so that's what we're all about. Are, so, are you familiar, uh, familiar with how many people actually access your information on a credit card transaction? Because I, I was told it was seven. Like if you, every time you do one credit card transaction, seven different entities get your complete information. Um, I've never been, let's, I would say, when, when I was where, when my previous jobs, it was about five. Uh, but I could see how, we you know, if you, um, if you went through a site that used a third party that also used a third party, then that could easily get up to seven. I mean, and the problem with that, right, is I, I like to show people, you know, you, 
give your credit card to the merchant. The merchant then has that information on their computer or their device. That goes up to um, an acquirer. That gets passed to a merchant bank. That gets passed through the Visa network. You know, it cascades in any one of those that get um, that that have their data, um, you know, mm-hmm. leaked out for any reason. Uh, that is, that's not just about that twelve dollar transaction you paid for, but it's the full extent of your credit. So when people, when merchants work with you, Russell, um, with OnePay, it sounds like you have a software option. How does they, how does this get consumed by merchants? This is a website integration, is a point of sale integration. What, what options are there? Uh, so they've got, they've got multiple options. It's a, it's a cloud-based service. So we'll either deploy it to, um, we'll either host it for you on Amazon Web Services or we'll deploy it to your Amazon Web Services instance, which is a really easy thing to do. Anybody, any small merchant could do it if they wanted to. Um, most choose not to. And then it's mobile friendly, so it can be used um, however, you know, however we want. There's a, a REST API that allows for integration with uh, e-commerce systems like, like WooCommerce and Magento, uh, and also with, um, with point of sale providers. And so at this okay. point, what we, you know, as a, as a merchant, and if you go to our website, Wampay, W-A-M-P-E-I.com, you can look at the videos and actually see demos in the store or online. And uh, the, the, the key, I think, for, for getting more adoption out there is to get more um, integrations with point-of-sale vendors. You know? How many locations do you have currently? Uh, about 16. Nice. Let's start somewhere. Yeah, we were, we were, and we were talking earlier with David here, who, who's still with us, about... Um, the non-custodial nature, or at least my personal preference of having non-custodial activities. Do you maybe want to share with the audience why you made that choice to, to prefer a non-custodial solution? Sure. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a whole uh, regulated industry of money transmitters, and their job is to move money from one place to another because the two parties that are transacting don't trust each other. They don't know each other. They can't be sure that they'll be able to, um, to, to pay each other. Well, that is no longer necessary with cryptocurrency because um, I can pay you by scanning your QR code and sending directly to you. So there's, there's not really a a need for me, especially when you're doing an in-person transaction, the payments there, both of you know, it's there and then you can exchange the, uh, the product. So there's a whole, you know, this trust factor, it was actually really quite, quite ingenious, you know, how the credit card companies came up with solving it because there wasn't a way to solve it before. I mean, heck, you know, they, they started it because a guy forgot his wallet and had a, a, a business meeting of like 25 people and he had to call his wife to come bring his checkbook. And that's what really started Diners Club. And, uh, and crypto, it's true. And, and crypto totally, you know, eliminates that. Because you don't need to have a third party. You have funds that settle, you know, almost immediately. You know, we, we typically have transactions going through at a very low um, level of urgency for just a couple of Satoshis per byte, uh, which amounts to maybe three or four or five cents per transaction, settling in, in under an hour, which is, you know, at the very wor- at the very best, or actually at the very worst, it is uh, 20 24 times faster than the best um, alternative in more conventional finance. Right, right. Because with Visa, MasterCard, Discover, there is the, the multi-step of, of authorization, right, where you swipe right. it at the device. And then settlement occurs sometime later once the banks have negotiated all of their interworkings, right, through the BIS and, and all that. And under no circumstance faster than, than the next day. Right. Right. Yeah. And in most cases, you know, up to 72 hours is like, I think, general rule of thumb. But if you're going international, there could be any number of wrinkles in between there. Right. Well, you know, Stripe and Square commonly for what they they have, you know, there's different grades of risk that the credit card companies have. Uh, They'll hold money. They'll hold a rolling reserve for as long as 35 or 45 days. Mm -hmm. Um, for some, and you know, you can imagine for a relatively small business that can be a business killer. Yeah. Especially, especially somewhere like Venezuela where the (laughs) currency has, the value has just changed overnight. If you're waiting a month, then you're really not getting anything out of it. You're in a bad way. Yeah. A bad, bad, you're, you now collected, uh, you know, one fifth of, uh, of what you were hoping to collect. 
Right, right. Well, I think we're coming up at the end of our segment. Danny, you want to ramp us out and um, maybe we roll into the next phase? Uh, yeah, well, you want to go ahead and get uh, contact info or? Yeah, sure. So if we, if we want to wrap it up here, um, Russell, why don't you give us some information if people want to get in touch with you uh, who hear us in our multi-city broadcast on Bloomberg AM radio. Um, just share with the audience how they can get in touch with you and learn more about what you're doing. Sure thing. So our website is wampay.com. W-A-M-P-E-I dot C-O-M. Uh, and you can also reach me at r at wampay.com. And of course, we're on LinkedIn, Facebook, and all the other fun stuff. But, um, and we've got YouTube channel, uh, YouTube channel too that you can see videos. And uh, sometimes we, we just put little, little things with my daughters. My daughters are 10 and 11, 10 and 12, teaching people how to use crypto. Are there any incentivizations for uh, new merchants to come on board with WAMPay? Uh, yeah, we've got one right now for the Denver Startup Week, which which we were at, Chuck and I were just at um, this week, which is um, um, normally it's two hundred and fifty dollars to get set up and, and running. Uh, it's a, come down to a dollar. Awesome. So you're local to Denver, and you would be able to assist a, a local merchant if they wanted to to get set up with you. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, we've got. Um, uh, a big event coming up next month where we're getting um, food trucks to, uh, to come to um, Improper City, which is in downtown. It's in uh, Rhino in Denver. And we're going to have a, a, basically a crypto event at night where people, we're going to train them, use wallets. Chuck and I were at something to, this past week that, that had something like that. This is going to be on a bigger scale and mm. with connectivity. <laughs> I, I was actually there at the Denver Startup Week as well. And oh, cool. th they were saying that that's going to be a regular thing there, that all of those businesses actually accepted cryptocurrency there. And this is going to be the actual blockchain hub for Denver. Well, I think, uh, I think Rhino should be. You know, if you look around there, there's about six or seven Bitcoin ATMs already. Uh, we're trying to get as many of those cool restaurants set up to accept crypto. Um, and, you know, whether they decide to use somebody like us or someone like a BitPay, it really doesn't matter to, uh, to me. What really matters is that people understand that crypto commerce is the, the wave of the future. It's a way for people to really control their funds and merchants to to get out of the business of collections and factoring and then just doing their business. Yeah. Uh, real quick though, how do you differ from uh, BTC pay server or are you similar to them? I know the uh, cheap air.com said that they were using that and it was a great alternative to uh, bit pay. Uh, it's a good alternative. You know, it includes a, a full node and uh, a lot more, uh, there's a lot more server resources, and, you know, and we want to make it so that a, a small business or a large business, it doesn't matter, can, um, can do this without really having to have right. IT. I, I know theirs is more, you know, targeted at e-commerce and yours would be a brick and mortar service as well, right? Ours is e-commerce yeah. as well, since we have okay. a REST API. Okay, cool. But they have a All great solution. All righty. Well, that sounds good then. Uh, thanks a lot. Anything else, Chuck? No, thanks for coming on, Russell. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right.